Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. You know, usually I try to keep my YouTube videos positive, meaning I'll talk about things that I'm enthused about using and doing. In today's video though, I'm going to be a bit negative. I'm going to talk about something I really don't like. What prompted me to do this is something I wrote about in my newsletter. If you don't already know, I have a photography related newsletter that goes out a couple times a week. And in it, I offer tips and suggestions on how you could improve your photography. In today's newsletter, I wrote about how to know when to stop editing because it's very easy to over edit an image. When I wrote that newsletter, it made me think of a new feature that's currently in the beta version of Photoshop that I really don't like. Now, if you're not familiar with the beta version of Photoshop, if you have a Creative Cloud subscription, you could download the beta version of Photoshop and it will cohabitate on your computer with the current version of Photoshop, meaning you don't have to delete the current version of Photoshop to use the beta version of Photoshop. If you don't know how to download the beta version of Photoshop, at the end of the video, I'll show you how. Let's talk about this new feature that's in the beta version that I really don't like. As you can see, I have the beta version of Photoshop open. And if I go over here and click on this little flask, I'll get what's new. This is, you know, what's new in this beta version of Photoshop. And if you go down here to parametric filters, this is what I don't like. And I'm just going to read part of this to you. Parametric filters let you quickly apply a number of different effects to your layers and edit them non-destructively. Parameter changes, changes are immediately reflected on your layer in the canvas for a smooth and flexible experience. I mean, that sounds great, doesn't it? It's horrible. At least I think it is. Let me show you. I have this image here, and in my opinion, you should apply a parametric filter to an image that really is already edited. And as you can see, this image is already edited. To get to the parametric filters in the beta version of Photoshop, go up to Filter, and then down here, Parametric Filters. And you can see that there are a number of different parametric filters and you have the option to create your own and you could load them up here but you can see there's a number of different parametric filters and if I just click on the first one it's new and if I hover over it I'll get a tool tip it says it's an embroidery parametric filter and I'll just click on it and you can see what it does I mean like why why would anyone want to do this now I could see maybe if you're more of an artist than you are a photographer Maybe you're kind of into these, but if you are an artist, let's say you are a painter or maybe you're just a lead pencil sketcher or whatever, wouldn't you rather do it yourself than just to have it done digitally for you by Photoshop? That's why I really don't understand it. Maybe you could use a parametric filter to give you an idea for something that you could paint or draw. But other than that, as far as a photographer is concerned, I think think they're horrible now i'm just going to go over them a little bit for this specific one and for all of them i think uh up here at the top you'll have resolution and that's a drop down and by default it will always give you medium resolution if you try any of the others for some of them it will change the image significantly for this one it just changed it slightly see if i go back to medium and then if i go back to let's say draft you can see how it changes the image. I'll leave it on ultra for now. Then you have some properties. You have some presets you could use. This one doesn't have any. Some of them do though. You could roll this open and you could delete this preset, export a new preset and so on. You could roll these open like I just did there. Um, you could randomize. I guess you could put a number in here and you know, I don't know, put 25 in there and hit the tab key and it just changes it a little bit. You could change the light angle and they're all different. What's what the options on this panel will be different for each parametric filter. You could change the number of covers, colors. Let's go to six. Um, you could change the density with the slider. Also, you should be aware of there's a lot of stuff that will be cut out that you could scroll down to or that you could go down here and just pull it open more. You can see that there's a lot of different options. I'm not going to go through everything because this will vary depending on what parametric filter you use. And you could see if I when we look over at the layers panel, it's on its own layer and it is a smart filter so that you could go back in and re-edit it. So it will remember all your adjustments that you've done. And it has a mask with it so that you could apply it to part of the image if you want to by getting a black uh, brush and painting on the mask. So make sure you click on the mask. And then if you get a brush, hit the B key. 
you get a larger brush by hitting the right bracket key and make sure that you're painting in black so you get the default swatches by hitting the D key, then hit the X key to switch them so black is the foreground. Then you could bring back some of the original image like that. So you make sure you're painting out black on the mask and you can do that if you want. Okay, but let's just throw this entire layer out. I'll just hit the delete key and let's go back up to filter, parametric filters, and let's pick another one. Here's this one. And you can see it's cut out. I think if we come to the edge, we could pull this out. No, but if you hover over it, you'll get a tooltip eventually. This is black and white vintage photo. We'll click on that. You can see what it did. It looks like something from the 19th century. You could come in and go to ultra, see what that looks like. You can see that changed it considerably. You could go smooth, high contrast, just smooth, negative. Oh, just go back to the default. I mean, randomize. You could, again, do different. These are similar adjustments to the previous one. You could change texture, brightness, and so on. Uh, let's get rid of this. I'll hit the delete key. Let's just try another one for the sake of completeness. But personally, as I mentioned, I don't really care for these. I've tried them all just to see. And some of them, I mean, you know, all right. Uh, is this something you want to do? Fine, I guess. It kind of looks like a glass filter. Um, let's get rid of that. I'll show you another one that actually, of all of them, is the only one that um, that I uh, think is decent, maybe. Uh, color. Let's see what it did. Uh, a lot of different properties here. We have, if you want to go to a sepia tone, if you want to go to a gradient cyan, grayscale, Go back to the default, I guess. You could click the swatch and you get a color picker and you could choose a different color if you want and click OK and it will shade it that different color. You could change the blending. Gradient overlay. And remember, there's always something hidden behind these little arrows. So you could roll those open and try, try different things and see what they do. And make it. More luminance, lumin, more luminance, more luminosity, more contrast, so on. So, like this one here, you know, you could get an image that kind of looks like an image. I'm just going to show you one more because one I thought might be interested because I do get requests quite often from people that want to either do a watercolor painting or an oil color painting from an image in Photoshop. And I do have like lessons on that on my website, but. The point is, that's something that a lot of people want to do. And there is a parametric filter for that. So if I go to this, you could see that uh, oil painting right here. And I don't think there's a watercolor one. There isn't. But there is oil painting. And if I click on that, you could see what that does. And again, if you are an artist, if I go to Ultra, it doesn't change. Well, it changed it a little. But if you are an actual artist and you know how to paint... You may want to be inspired by a photo. So you'd see this photo of this sculpture I took, and you'd say, I, I'd like to paint that. And you'd actually like to do it yourself, wouldn't you? You don't want to, I guess, do it this way. <laughs> so anyway, that's the parametric filters, and that's why I don't like them. I really don't like them at all. And it really doesn't look like an oil painting to me. It looks like a, just kind of a blurred mess. Now, granted... I haven't really done a lot with the adjustments. I could have fiddled with them quite a ways and probably made it look like an oil painting. But it, to me, it's not worth the effort. Let's throw that out. Now, I mentioned that if you don't know about the beta version of Photoshop, you could download it as long as you have a Creative Cloud subscription. And why you may want to download it is because you get these previews of new technology that's going to be eventually in the full blown version of Photoshop. For example, if I go back to this flask, and if you want to see what's new, just click on this flask. There's something in here that actually is um, really good. This remove workflow improvement. I did a video on this. The generative AI remove tool is vastly improved, in my opinion, in the beta version of Photoshop, in the current beta version of Photoshop. And it's not yet in the current version of Photoshop. So there are things here that you might want to have access to uh, because some of them are very good. Now to get it, what you need to do is open up your Creative Cloud app. Then go to the Apps tab. It's the second tab from the top on the left. Then click on Beta at the top right here. And you can see that I 
have access to a lot of different Adobe beta apps because I subscribe to the whole, you know, shebang. So I get, you know, everything Adobe has to offer apparently. And because of that, I could download all of these uh, different beta apps. I don't think you can if you just have, say, the photography plan. I think you'd only be able to get the Photoshop beta, and you can see it's right here. And I already have it installed, uh, so it's there. If you want to uninstall it, click these three dots, and then go down to the bottom and click Uninstall. And then you'll uninstall it properly so that it doesn't leave any remnants on your computer and doesn't mess up any of your other Adobe apps. So that's how you get the beta version of Photoshop. And there is my first negative YouTube video in some time. And that's it. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.